Hi, in this video I'm going to set up a smaller dry palette from this big Ardex gouache set and show you my favorite method for transferring a drawing onto black paper. This set has 18 colors that come in 30 ml jelly cup style containers seated in a plastic case. The colors in this set are creatively named, but they also included pigment ingredient codes. This selection is intentionally muted and pastel, as they do offer a different set that contains more vibrant and primary mixing type colors. This case is pretty big and my desk space is limited, so my first goal was to set up a smaller container for them. I'll do that right away while they are in this more manageable liquid form before they start to harden from air drying. These can be re-wet from dry and I personally find them easier to use in their dry state. If you are used to watercolor pan sets, this will seem pretty normal, but it might seem unusual if you're used to other mediums like acrylic that doesn't re-wet. This gouache will retain its opacity when re-wet as long as you do not add too much water. For those who paint really large and prefer to use fresh tube paints, you can extend the time that they stay fresh in their original jelly cup by spraying them with purified water and letting them soak for a few minutes before you paint. They also offer a special moisturizing spray made for gouache, but I just use bottled water so that I don't introduce any mold spores from tap water. You could use a brush or a small scoop tool to take some paint out of each cup when setting up your dry palette. Because all brands of gouache will crack or crumble to some degree once dry, it's important to use something that has a lid to keep them contained. I use this tiny little tray with sections made for holding glitter or beads. I'll put the links to anything I use in the description section under the video. Before I do a painting, I like to know what to expect, so I test things like how thick of a layer can I do before cracking is an issue, how intense is the pigment load, how smooth and matte are they once dry. I make swatch cards with my rubber stamps to keep in a binder. This way, I can keep track of all the light fast ratings and have a reference for how they behave diluted with water. If you're interested, I post all of these images on my website's pigment database. I've organized that to be viewed either by brand or by pigment, so you can see how each color compares to other brands' paints. I was pretty happy with this set, and definitely think it's a good bargain for those wanting to try gouache without spending too much on individual tubes from the main designer gouache brands like Windsor & Newton, De La Rowney, or Schmincke. Tubes are definitely more convenient, but the trade-off is that this odd jelly cup design gives you much more paint at a lower cost. These have a high pigment load, and the pigments were ground very finely, with none of the thick, gritty particles sometimes found in the cheapest bargain sets. This let them perform similarly to watercolors when diluted, and all of the colors aside from white can produce a salt texture reaction in wet washes. I was a little surprised that the white and titanium white were both PW6, as I had expected the plain white to be a different sort of mixing white, like PW5, but it's possible it's diluted or just a different form of PW6. None of the colors rub off on the page or smear like chalk once dry. All of the colors dried opaque and matte, with the exception of black that dried slightly glossy, otherwise it seems like an appropriate amount of binder was used in these paints. A few of the colors are made with fugitive pigments, which is pretty common in gouache labeled as designer gouache, which focus on bright colors that are ideal for art that is scanned for prints, website, or product design. You could spend considerably more money to buy light fast pigment gouache for paintings to hang on the wall long term from fine art brands like M. Graham, Da Vinci, or Schmincke. However, aside from light fastness, as you can see in the swatch comparison to Schmincke's gouache line, the general appearance of these paints is not dramatically different. One of the biggest perks to using opaque gouache instead of transparent watercolor paints is the ability to add lighter details on top of darker surfaces. 
For example, if you painted a dark background with ink or watercolor, you could still use gouache on top of that. I could see this being a good medium for animal art, such as painting a solid dark brown shape of a dog, and then dry brushing the lighter tan strokes of gouache on top of it to create a fur effect. You have more freedom in general to work from light to dark or dark to light with no restrictive order, with no worries about preserving white or light areas compared to transparent paints. You can also easily paint on black watercolor paper. My normal method of drawing with a pen or pencil doesn't show up very well on black paper. In order to have my line work easily visible while painting, I like to trace over a drawing on top of a chalk coated transfer sheet. I typically draw with a black pen on white paper and then I photocopy it for tracing over. You could trace anything you want for practice painting, such as a photograph or a magazine page. It's a nice, simple process where I can just use a pen, pencil, stylus, or a ball tip tool to trace my drawing, causing that chalky surface to be rubbed off onto my black watercolor paper. Graphite tracing paper is much more common, but the pencil gray doesn't show up very well on dark surfaces, so I figured I'd share this chalk white option just in case anyone hasn't seen it before. In the future, I can see using these gouache paints for little opaque accents, highlights, or even covering up mistakes in my transparent watercolor paintings. After a lot of frustration with white gel pens lately that stop and start flow or leave scratchy marks, I've gotten more into the habit of adding last minute highlights with gouache and a little detail brush instead. I'd love to hear your thoughts about gouache. Let me know in the comments below.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.